on the line. Farmer's life is on the line. Extra edition, we weren't allowed. Extra edition, we weren't allowed. Bring Assange home now. Of course, he might be sent straight on from Sweden to the United States, thanks to the temporary surrender arrangement between those two countries. And in the United States, he will be prosecuted on trumped up grand jury charges by a government that is intent on punishing him, just like they have punished alleged WikiLeaks whistleblower Bradley Manning. Shame! Shame, exactly. And you know what? We say that's wrong and we will not stand for it. Julian Assange is a courageous journalist. WikiLeaks was founded with one aim, justice through transparency. And through Cablegate, the Iraq war logs, the Afghan war diaries, WikiLeaks has helped tip the balance of power from the 1% to the 99%. And apparently our governments don't like that one bit. The United States government starts wars in the name of freedom and democracy. But when the authority is actually challenged, they look more and more like a totalitarian regime. When the cable gate releases began, they tried to shut down WikiLeaks. They called Julian Assange a terrorist. They called for him to be assassinated, hunted down, garroted in his hotel room, etc, etc. And our government's response? Our Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, instantly labelled him a criminal. They've dismissed his complaints. They've dismissed his complaints about the death threats as part of a media campaign to avoid extradition to the US. That is a scandal. And our Attorney General, Nicola Roxon, well, she has said today that um, Australia will not intervene in an extradition between the US and the UK or the US and Sweden. She's merely claimed, she merely claimed that she had sought assurances from the US that they would apply all the proper processes to Assange. The point is, no US processes should be applied to him. He is a journalist. And as for Bob Carr, before he became foreign minister, he wrote on his blog that certain aspects of the Swedish justice system applying to Assange, such as the fact that he would be tried in secret, are an outrage by Australian standards. And he's done nothing to defend Assange either. Shine, Bob Carr! Shine! Well, I say, Gillard, Roxon, Carr, you are an outrage. You are an outrage by our standards. This is supposed to be a democracy. You're supposed to represent us, not your friends in Washington. It is your duty to protect Australians when they are threatened right overseas. Exactly. But as Christine Assange has observed, Trying to get on. the reaction of power has exposed them more than the cables, and our government has been exposed as gutless, untrustworthy and self-serving. So it's up to us, and that's why I'm so glad to see you all here today, it's up to us to defend Julian Assange and defend our democracy. Our first speaker today is David Shoebridge, who is a Greens member for the New South Wales Upper House. David is a tireless advocate for free speech and civil liberties in our state and he's currently campaigning for a Bill of Rights here. David. Thanks, Linda. Uh, thanks to you all for coming out tonight. I'd like to first of all pay my respects to the traditional owners of this land we're meeting on today, land of the Gadigal people. Sovereignty's never been ceded over this land. But I'd also like to thank the Stop the War Coalition and all those other groups who've come out here today and have people on the streets of Sydney doing what our government, what our foreign minister and what our prime minister have failed to do, which is speak up for the rights of Julian Assange as an Australian citizen to protection by our government. Because he's not getting it and we're demanding that today. <laughs> Julian Assange and Bradley Manning sit together as probably the two most dangerous people on the planet for our government and the United States government. And what has been the response from those governments? 
Well, our government has been silent, but the United States government has been actively persecuting Bradley Manning. And when the direct question is asked of Bob Carr, has there been any action taken by the United States to either secretly or otherwise extradite Julian Assange from the United Kingdom or Sweden? The answer from the Foreign Affairs Minister is the Australian government has no evidence of that. Well, when Senator Scott Ludlam asked, uh, asked Senator Bob Carr, what has the Australian government done about inquiring whether or not there's a secret extradition or some other extradition of Julian Assange, he was met by stonewalling and silence from our Foreign Affairs Minister. This is an Australian citizen and that is not good enough from our government. Because what is the crime that Julian Assange is really on trial for by the United States? What is the crime that Bradley Manning is on trial for by the United States. Julian Assange's crime is telling the truth, speaking truth to power, and for once, showing people around this globe the real human face of a war that's been fought on our television cameras on the internet. He is telling us the truth of war and the ugly, brutal face of a war that is effectively being carried out like it's a video game. But people around the globe are dying. And that's what he's being committed to trial for. WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks is a new venture in terms of global information on this planet. Never before have people been able to see so directly what our governments are doing. Never before have people been able to have exposed to them on a global scale the truth about the American military regime. Never before have we been able to look on our computer screens and see things like turkey shoots happening where real people are being killed by the machinery paid for by our taxes. Well, WikiLeaks enables us to all stand up and say, this crime is not being committed in our name. This crime being undertaken by our governments, whether it's a war in Afghanistan or a war in Iraq, this crime is not being committed in our name. We need to be on the streets here today to speak up for Julian Assange because our government is failing its citizens. We will not rest, we will continue to come here. There's a gathering here today in Sydney. It's being matched by one in Melbourne, by one in Brisbane, by one in Perth, by one in Townsville because people across Australia are calling on our government to stand up for Julian Assange, stand up for freedom of speech, and stand up to the United States. Thank you all for coming. And we're very pleased to have here today as our next speaker, David Hicks. Maybe he should use the megaphone. You can't hear down the back. I'll, I'll try and speak a bit louder. So a journalist detained and tortured, a practice not uncommon in news headlines, a claim usually made against dictatorships. Unfortunately, however, I am talking about a very possible near future scenario involving the governments of Australia and the US. And as we know, this will not be the first time that they have been connected to torture. Governments who promote themselves as nations that as a matter of principle and law enjoy freedom of expression, speech and the press. Julian Assange is a journalist, a brave and selfless journalist who is not afraid to publish information for our benefit, though there should be nothing to be afraid of. Julian has done nothing more than act in the spirit of freedom of speech, freedom of the press, truth and transparency in his professional capacity as a journalist exactly what's expected from our journalists and yet he has become a political prisoner our media is of poor quality already and what is being done to julian with the acknowledgement of our government will only ensure this continues for the message it sends to all other journalists including the journalists here publish what we don't want you to and we'll destroy your life Julian will be extradited to the US. It's not a matter of if, but when. The Australian government has proven by past and current examples 
but what they have to say on the matter is meaningless. They lack credibility. I've had first-hand I've had first-hand experience of what it is like to be an Australian citizen and a political prisoner of the U.S. Australian consular assistance did not protect me from, uh, from treatment, but amounted to torture. Instead, they allowed it to happen, and they seem to be giving all indications that history is about to repeat itself. Such involvement of itself amounts to complicity. The Australian government is once again sacrificing and devaluing Australian citizenship only to appease a foreign power. Julian Assange is part of a long line of Australian citizens neglected, if not harmed, by their own government while abroad. Embarrassing at the least for Australia and at times illegal at its worst. It appears Australian citizenship is worthless in the view of the Australian government that is Liberal and Labor. Up till now the Australian government has been able to intervene on his behalf and yet they have not and they are able to intervene in the future but based on past experience they won't. Among other things, for example, they should be securing Assange, sorry, they should be securing assurances that Julian won't be mistreated while in US custody. Instead they just deny that he'll even go there. We need to demand of our leaders freedom of speech, including freedom of press, where incentives and awards are given to those such as Julian, not punishments. We want a dynamic and independent media who can operate without fear of reprisals, something that we currently lack. We want freedom from politically motivated detentions, freedom from physical and psychological torture. Our leaders need, our leaders need to take more pride in being Australian, to safeguard its citizens abroad, and give peace of mind to those who carry Australian passports overseas and to have the courage to say no to foreign countries who treat us as second-class citizens and wish us harm. Julian must be brought home before it is too late. My experience is a good prediction as to what awaits Julian. I cannot understand why we, especially our government, have still not learnt from the past. I hope and I truly hope that Julian is prepared for conditions that will amount to torture because that is what awaits him once he ends up in US hands. Thank you so much, David Hick. Okay, so we've got lots of great speakers lined up for you today and our next speaker is Simon Foo, Deputy President of the Pirate Party Australia. As a lot of you know, the Pirate Party campaigns for freedom of information and culture civil and digital liberties and government transparency. Simon. Thank you. Julian Assange first became a household name with the release of the collateral murder video, where journalists in Iraq were gunned down by a helicopter gunship. This was followed by Afghan war diaries and Cablegate. Through these leaks, allegedly leaked by Bradley Manning, WikiLeaks became easily the most important news organisation on the planet. This is due to a lack of competition from the mainstream media, who increasingly cozy up to their political and corporate masters. The war in Afghanistan is a prime example. Journalists mostly get in bed with their national military and stick to the agenda outlined in various press conferences held to give out the company line. Whilst there are some brave journalists who don't play that game, the majority are content to bask in the glow of the powerful whilst publishing what is expected by their corporate masters. This is why WikiLeaks is so important. Its agenda is purely to provide a mechanism for transparency, a way for citizens of the world to see what is done in our names. To paraphrase Julian, only through accurate access to information can people make rational decisions about how they wish to live their own lives. The widespread condemnation of the leaks and the demonisation and persecution of Assange demonstrates that Western governments, including the Gillard government, are colluding to protect the interests of the US war machine and its profiteers. Like cockroaches scurrying away from the light, the U.S. has launched an unprecedented assault on whistleblowers, with many figures in the U.S. political establishment calling for the assassination of Assange for being a high-tech terrorist, and harsh penalties are being passed for people found guilty of leaking information. Obama, after promising to protect whistleblowers, has now become very aggressive in punishing people who blow the whistle on corrupt conduct in the U.S.A. Credit card giants, Visa, Mastercard, as well as PayPal, 
put in place the WikiLeaks financial blockade at the behest of members of the US Congress. No doubt aware of the implications of increased transparency for corrupt banking institutions, they undertook to cut off funds without any legal basis. The website was also temporarily lost hosting, which was quickly resupplied by the private party of Switzerland and mirrored by literally hundreds of organisations and individuals around the world. This is where accusations of sexual assault first surfaced in Sweden. I don't want to speculate about the claims of the women involved, but what is clear is that Julian Assange has not been charged with a thing. He has been held in detention for over 500 days for mere questioning. It is unacceptable that someone can be deprived of their freedom without charge. It is unacceptable that he can be extradited just to be questioned. Basic legal principles have been ignored in the frenzy to get Assange for causing the USA embarrassment. Not just in Sweden, but the USA, Australia and Britain are all guilty. WikiLeaks is constantly ridiculed by various hacks and chills working in the mainstream media. Julian Assange is described as a megalomaniac, as arrogant, even his dirty socks are used against him in an attempt to smear him. This is because WikiLeaks is showing them how to do their job. It's part of a new media, a media based on participation, a media that holds the powerful to account, a social media. The old media lets down the very people it's meant to inform time and again. During the much tight leadership challenge between R Rudd and Gillard, the government passed the new law streamlining extradition procedures, i.e. making it easier for foreign countries to demand your extradition if you're suspected of a crime. There was no mention in the media, as most journalists were focused on the drama of the Machiavellian power struggle they had been cheering on for months. It got passed quietly with little opposition or even comment, and nothing much was said about it in the media. We have seen the dangers of loosening extradition laws in the UK, where 23-year-old Richard O'Dwyer, owner of file-sharing site TV Shack, has been remanded for extradition to the USA, a country he has never visited for hosting links to pirated material, an activity that is not illegal in the UK. It is suspected that the law, Australian law was passed to make sure it was easier to extradite Julian Assange should he ever come home. But it is also a threat to the freedom of us all. With silence on important issues like these from the old media, it is up to all of us to be the media. We have to keep each other informed. We have to speak out about injustices we see. We have to be like Julian Assange and WikiLeaks or the silence will become deafening. Speak up. According to the Stratford documents WikiLeaks published, the US's charge is already waiting for Julian once his European legal hurdles are cleared. Julian Assange is not a US citizen. He should not be tried there. Nor has he broken any Australian laws. He should not be subjected to laws in the US just because he made them look bad. Under the new Australian extradition laws, we all face the risk of being extradited to countries we have never visited for activities that aren't illegal here. During the US Revolution, the Continental Forces famously said no taxation without representation. They understood that being subjected to the laws of a government without being able to participate in that government is fundamentally unjust. They should understand that we must resist any attempt for Australian citizens to be tried under American law. We can't elect them, therefore should not be beholden to their laws. This is a sign of democracy under assault. It is up to each and every one of us to stand up for justice, for democracy and for freedom. It is up to all of us to work together to defend Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Western governments are increasingly banding together to take away the rights of, our citizen, of citizens. We need to band together to fight back. We need to stand up. We need to stand up for each other and fight back against the erosion of civil liberties and against governments that serve the interests of a corporate elite against their own populations. This is not a struggle that can be left to professional politicians or activists. This is a fight for our freedom of our way of life. Julian Assange is a metaphorical canary down the mine shaft. What they try to do to him is just a precursor to what can happen to any one of us who stands up for democracy, who stands up for equality and who stands up for freedom. We must stand up now while we still can. Thank you. Before I speak myself, Austin McKell, who's an Australian journalist many of you all have heard of, is currently almost trapped in Cairo, sent a statement this afternoon that he wanted to be read. And I'll read this. It's a very short three paragraphs. I would like to start by saying, this is Austin, not me. I would like to start by saying how honoured how honored I was when asked to write this letter. I must also take this opportunity to thank Mr. Hassan for the time he has taken to raise attention regarding my case. Someone of his profile finding time to speak about my situation would be worthy of thanks in any case. Given the far more serious persecution he is facing, it shows a remarkable sense of solidarity and concern for others. The situation is stark. 
The possibility of Assange's extradition is very real and very imminent. We know that Sweden has participated in the US program of extraordinary rendition, allowing two men, Egyptian citizens, to be kidnapped by American operatives and taken to Egypt for torture. We know that the Australian government cannot be trusted to stand up to America and protect its citizens for, from such treatment, as was so amply demonstrated by the cases of David Hicks, who you just heard, and Mamdou Habib, and is demonstrated by, now by their ongoing failure to act on behalf of Assange. The Swedes say that the only reason for the extradition is so that Assange can be questioned regarding charges relating to the personal contact within Sweden, not because of his work with WikiLeaks. If this is really the case, then why don't they first guarantee he will not be taken from Sweden to US custody? Why doesn't our government demand this of them? The answers to these questions are painfully obvious. Once more, our government is set to sell out the rights of an Australian citizen at the request of Imperial HQ in Washington. We can't let them get away with it. That was Austin. How yeah. mean. Yeah. I just want to speak very briefly because a lot of speakers, my message really is one about courage and saying that what's happening in the moment with Assange, he's been under house arrest for over 500 days, has not been charged with anything, nothing. This is a very important point. So when we talk in Australia about courage and bravery and standing up for those who actually make a difference, in my lifetime, and I'm a young pup of 30s somewhere, there are very few people from my country that I would say as I can be as proud of as Julian Assange. In the space of six years, he has released more documents on WikiLeaks than the entire corporate media combined in the last 30. That's his words, not mine. <laughs> And at the moment, as many will be aware, Fairfax staff are on strike in Sydney and Melbourne and elsewhere in New South Wales and Victoria for the very reason that they say that important media actually matters. Whatever we think about Fairfax, we all have our issues and concerns about them. The fact of the matter is they're an alternative to the Murdoch press and for that reason they should be supported as well. Just finally, as a journalist, in an independent journalist in Australia, what I would say about Julian Assange is both in his supposed crimes or lack thereof we should stand up and support him, and more importantly, demand that the Australian government under Julia Gillard, and a weird irony this morning, it's a strange, fucked up world, when Julia Bishop, the Deputy Foreign Minister, should I say the Opposition Foreign Minister, says exactly what needs to be said, which is, Julia Gillard accused Assange of a crime. He's committed no crime. That by definition prejudices his case anywhere. I and mean, when, as David Shubridge said, when Bob Carr was asked in Senate estimates yesterday what was actually going to happen if the US asked for extradition, Bob Carr said nothing had, been Whoa. nothing had been received. What I think needs to be said is nothing has been received he wants to acknowledge. He must defend someone like him and demand that government stands up for him. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Professor Stuart Rees of the Sydney Peace Foundation. The Sydney Peace Foundation, of course, awarded Julian Assange their gold medal in 2011 in recognition of Assange's exceptional courage and initiative in the pursuit of human rights. Stuart Rees. First of all, congratulate, congratulations to you all for being here. What we're protesting about is centuries and centuries of the notion that secrecy is a key feature of government. And the, the significant achievements of WikiLeaks, of Bradley Manning and Julian Assange is to challenge that notion. All sorts of key courageous figures of the kind referred to by Anthony a few minutes ago, such as the political satirist Daniel Defoe, such as Tom Paine, the author of The Rights of Man, such as Daniel Ellsberg of the Pentagon Papers, such as Bradley Manning, such as Julian Assange, have been challenged because, have been uh, prosecuted uh, because they challenged this notion that secrecy was a form of government. Secrecy based on the assumption that you don't really need to know, that you are not sufficiently sophisticated to understand. So let's bear that in mind. We are trying to, as we stagger through this first part of the 21st century, we want to challenge the notion that more and more secrecy more and more uh, mean resources for the great God security is not what we want in a so-called open democracy. 
The second thing I want to say, and in, in some ways I am echoing what's already been said by other speakers, let's be very careful in listening to what the American public, or rather the American political and military culture, is saying. The very respectable American ambassador to Australia, Jeffrey, something or other, Jeffrey Weiss, a close friend of the president, said yesterday that he that uh, America, his government, has no particular uh, interest in Assange. And yet if you switch back for just a few months and listen to what major political and media leaders in America have said, you'd know that uh, Jeffrey is being fooled or he's not listening or he doesn't want to tell us the truth. Uh, a major contender for the presidency said that um, capital punishment wouldn't be good enough for Assange. Uh, similar, similar comments were made by the anchor man on uh, Fox News. He said, I know it's illegal to encourage people of America to go out and use guns on the streets, but if any of you have a gun, I would advise you to get hold of it and shoot the son of a bitch. Now, in response to that, to those demands from leading Americans, and if that's not good enough, listen to the amazing Sarah Palin who said that Assange should be hunted down like Bin Laden. In response to that, the unfortunate pack of cowards, not all of them, but most of them, in that privileged uh, the corral in Canberra, said nothing except to say that uh, Assange had probably committed an offence and that um, in the case of the former Attorney General, we ought to consider taking his passport away from him. There was a deafening silence. So Anthony's reference to please let's find the quality of courage in public life out of respect for the courage that Assange and Bradley Manning have shown is a very important demand to, uh, to make. Because unfortunately, the cowardice, the substitutes, the, the, uh, the use of figures of speech to conceal what they really mean is part of the absurd culture that goes on in Canberra and that really makes us feel that we are unfortunately likely yet again to do the Americans bidding. Final thing, and uh, large audiences at night after they've heard several speakers always want to hear a speaker say, and the final thing. <laughs> Julia Gillard, Gillard has said several times, uh, I don't get it. I don't get why you are concerned about WikiLeaks, why are you concerned about freedom of speech, why are you concerned about Julian Assange. I don't really get it. All of the people here get it. It's about justice. It's actually about not holding Manning and Assange accountable, but holding accountable the people who think that the violent use of force, think only of the collateral damage video, is a way to run a country, is the way to, the way to run policies. They're the people who should be hold, held accountable. And this crowd is here to say, Julia Gillard, listen to us because we get it, and the people surrounding you apparently do not. Free Julian Assange. The Australian government act immediately to secure Julian Assange's release. Julian's role in spearheading the enormously important window to the truth, WikiLeaks, is obvious to all. Also obvious are the reasons why the Australian government has an interest in trying to silence WikiLeaks. And not standing up for Julian is one way of attempting to do that. As other, peer, as other speakers have said tonight, the information that WikiLeaks has shared with the world is information we have a right to know. It is information that the government doesn't want us to know. And for that reason, it's even more important that we do know it. The publication of WikiLeaks, by WikiLeaks, of the Iraq and Afghan war logs and diaries has given everyone, and in particular the anti-war movement, a powerful tool against these criminal and increasingly unpopular imperialist wars. For some people, the, the exposure of the details of the planning and the actioning of two of the most grotesque war crimes in recent history vindicated our trenchant opposition to these wars. 
For others, it was a window into the real intent of Western powers and drove home the terrible consequences of taking Western leaders double speak on, pay, on face value. The Supreme Court's ruling on Julian Assange's appeal comes just as Western leaders are openly canvassing invading yet another country, Stop the Syria. Military intervention in Syria has been threatened once again following the massacre in Hula, even while it isn't clear exactly who carried out this horrendous massacre. We should not allow sympathy for the victims of this massacre to become the pretext for Western military intervention in Syria. That has been done before and with disastrous results. Iraq, Afghanistan and Libya. These brutal wars, all justified as humanitarian and to restore democracy, have only led to greater numbers of people being killed. And this is where WikiLeaks has done such a powerful service. In a world increasingly mired in Orwellian doublespeak from the 1%, WikiLeaks plays an invaluable role in shining the light on what that 1% really think. I don't know if any of you saw the, no, I'm sure you did, the huge anti-war protests against NATO in Chicago a week or so ago. But in particular, the moving protest by the Iraq and the Afghanistan war veterans. The people that are fed up with being used as cannon fodder. It was a powerful reminder that people do not forget. These veterans lined up to throw their medals away. A symbolic rejection of the so-called war on terror. One of these, Scott Olson, a former vet and an Occupy supporter and protester said, these medals once made me feel good. Then I came back to reality and I don't want them anymore. But I think WikiLeaks' publication of the war logs has had a lot to do with this. We should use this moment to recommit ourselves to the struggle to defend WikiLeaks and Julian Assange and that other brave individual, Bradley Manning. The Australian government must break from its sorry past. Its refusal to assist its citizens that the US has a special interest in persecuting, namely David Hicks and Mamdou Habib. It must speak up for Julian Assange and demand his release from custody immediately. Blowing the whistle on war crimes is not a crime. Free Julian Assange, defend WikiLeaks. And I'd like to say that I'm in fantastic company here tonight. I would like to acknowledge David Hicks Thank you, David, for your words and your incredible bravery being here tonight. I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting on Aboriginal land, on Gadigal land, land that was never ceded, never sold, never given away. I pay my respects to the elders past and present. This is Aboriginal land, always was and always will be. I'd also like to acknowledge the spineless Australian government's lack of support Shine. for the safety of one of its own citizens. Our government officials smugly say that Assange will receive the same help any citizen gets from our embassy. But we know from the cases of David Hicks and Mamdou Habib that that help is non-existent. I had hoped that today we would, this would be an occasion for celebration rather than the fateful decision that was handed down by London Supreme Court yesterday. It is with a heavy heart that we now have to rally with fear for the continuing safety of Julian Assange. What we have seen here is more than the isolation and persecution of one man, of Julian Assange. It is the effective crushing of the ideals that are pertained in WikiLeaks. We have seen the ruling elites of the world act together to silence the one voice that dared to expose the secret workings of their governments. This is particularly true of the United States of America, where critics of Assange and WikiLeaks have called for the assassination of Julian, providing that all the documents he released 
where Trove would show us that all the documents he released were a true reflection of the brutality of that particular regime. The hysterical response from America has led to the many fears that Julian Assange could be rendered to the United States, where he will vanish into the same limbo that contains Bradley Manning. If there was one event more than any other that defined the war in Iraq, it was that release of footage that showed the helicopter that killed that Iraqi journalist, his cameraman and the civilians that surrounded him. Murder! This piece of film shocked the world and highlighted the horrors of war and the desensitisation that marked the US military's treatment of Iraqi civilians. Like the photos of the atrocities at Abu Ghraib, the f that film released by WikiLeaks had the effect of shocking regular people's belief in the justice of America's military role in Iraq. We need the disclosures of WikiLeaks to enlighten the world to the devious machinations of governments and their minions. How regular were the releases of secret military and diplomatic documents that we came to expect from WikiLeaks? And how barren is the infosphere now that the world's banks and the 1% have effectively closed down WikiLeaks. It has been a cautionary tale to watch the rise and fall of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. It has shown the way that not one government has stood behind truth-telling and transparency. Not one government has had the courage or the innocence to stand for exposure. Instead, they have all shown their potential guilt and secretiveness. The price of truthful truth-telling has been very high for Assange and for WikiLeaks, and the costs are still being paid with this dodgy extradition ruling and the fears that surround it. Extraditing Assange to Sweden for questioning is an extreme and secretive action in itself. Under Swedish law, Assange could be held incommunicado while he is questioned over an issue that is so murky it is hard to believe they are seriously carrying out such extreme actions. It is highly unusual for anyone to be extradited for questioning over an issue as flimsy and vague as this. And it was with great trepidation that we await Julian's fate over the next few weeks. Australia must stand up and protect this courageous Australian who appears to be in great danger of phony justice, secret deals, possible rendition and international revenge. I would now like to read a message from Australian Green Senator Scott Ludlam. It's only short. Bring Julian home. Around the country today, we're coming together to demand action from the Australian government to protect an Australian citizen from prosecution and from persecution. Yesterday's verdict in the UK Supreme Court provides for another delay, another fortnight of legal limbo. It is another two weeks in which the important work of this publishing organisation stays on hold. We're calling for Julian Assange to come home. The WikiLeaks publishing organisation has been targeted with sustained harassment and character assassination. And its finances have been shattered by a banking bl blockade by Visa, MasterCard, PayPal and others. In Australia, we have seen bipartisan political indifference on behalf of the old parties. Indifference that looks on closer examination like hostility. The Australian citizens need diplomatic, legal and political help from his government and he's not getting it. Today we've come together to demand his safe return to Australia and more importantly to meet each other in person to organise and plan the next stages of this campaign. We need to raise our voices much louder 
indirect challenge to the economic and political interests that seem so to feel so threatened by uncompromising transparency. Thanks for turning out today in defence of democracy, in defence of the freedom to communicate and in defence of the people who now find themselves under attack for leading the way. Free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange. Our award-winning investigative journalist, Wendy Beacon. Wendy. Wendy's also an academic um, professor of journalism at UTS and um, a long-time social justice advocate. Thank you very much and uh, can I say uh, it's a privilege to be asked to speak tonight at this rally which is just one of many rallies happening all around the world and it's critically important that even though there are so many issues going on at the same time like rivers bubbling with coal seam gas, journalists getting sacked, many many other issues that we keep our focus on this issue and keep protesting because we can be absolutely sure that the pressure on WikiLeaks, the ideas it stands for and on Julian Assange will continue and continue from as Irene has so eloquently said from every government uh, really around the world but most particularly those in the US Alliance of which of course we are such a small but absolutely obedient part which is why when I heard the US ambassador this morning uh, being quoted as saying that the US government wouldn't have the slightest interest in extraditing Julian Assange I knew uh, that it had absolutely no relevance uh, the fact that the uh, the Australian government won't release under FOI uh, some important information that's needed to know what the situation is just means he is a complete irrelevancy now what I thought I would do uh, fairly briefly is just, uh, sorry, I've got my notes on my mobile phone, which has somehow gone off the screen. Yes, what I thought I would do just um, briefly is, is go back to um, a year or so ago when many of us were rallying, and I know a lot of you have since, and when I spoke uh, the last time, I went back and looked at my notes, and what I remembered is the huge welling up of public sympathy for Julian's J Disney, Julian Assange in the early days of this campaign. And then what we saw at the beginning of 2011, an insidious but unfortunately only too typical attack uh, to try to divert people from what the real issues are. So I thought I'd go through a few of the arguments that have been put to me and say how, you know, what I actually feel about those arguments. Now the first thing that was raised that when people were talking about how he would have a defence in the United States to publishing, it was that he wasn't a journalist. Now, some like the New York Times and others led the pack on that one and that was very disappointing and it, it's a great, greatly encouraging, I think, that on this issue, the MEAA, which is our journalist union, really stood up and gave Julian Assange an award for his work and contribution to Australian and other journalism and I thought that was very welcome. So, first of all, he is a journalist. Then we got a whole lot of stories and in-depth pieces on Julian Assange's personality and you know so many times now I've had to people people say to me oh I hear he's not a very nice person I hear he's eccentric I hear he's that and quite frankly I couldn't care less yeah. and in fact in fact I haven't met Julian uh, Julian Assange I'd like to meet him and I actually think I'd find him to be quite an interesting person. But nevertheless, it is irrelevant, and I'm sure it is to all of you too. We're not here to idealise a personality. We're here to stick to the issues. And all this character assassination of him is really part of just a simple diversion campaign. The next thing, of course, or another thing that was said is that somehow, somewhere, somebody could have been damaged by the publication of the cables. Well, for a start, a huge amount more benefit by shining a light on the way that the US government deals with its embassies around the world, huge amount more benefit was gained from the publication of those cables. Just the video 
of the uh, murder in Iraq alone, the collateral damage uh, video would have done a huge amount uh, more benefit. But anyway, that's the sort of argument that you can never answer. You can never definitively prove that there is not an effect of a particular kind. However, uh, what you can say is that those cables, before they were ever published, were published to hundreds of thousands of people, internal people. So if anyone cared about the safety of anyone, uh, those people were in fact responsible. Uh, so these are just some of the arguments that have been put along the way. And I think what's been really impressive is that people have rejected those and the campaign has built just looking at the various actions that are taking place in London, will take place in the United States. Now there's one last, two last arguments I want to mention. One is that, and Janet Albrechtson said this to me at a forum where I was speaking with her about WikiLeaks, and she said, oh, none of you people care about Bradley Manning. Well, you know, that is just a pile of right as well. And again, just a way of saying, don't talk about Julian Assange. I'm sure all the people here are the same people who are protesting about Bradley Manning and have been from day one. And it's absolutely appalling what has happened to Bradley Manning and the way he's been treated. But to suggest that because that's happening to Bradley Manning, it should happen, or we shouldn't care about the fact it would happen to other people too, in this case, Julian Assange, is of course, again, another irrelevancy. Another argument I've had put to me is that somehow I don't care about women and attacks on women because I'm supporting Julian Assange. Well, of course I believe that of, of the rights of women to complain about sexual assault. I don't know all about the laws in Sweden, but I'm prepared to believe because in some ways Sweden is a progressive society and the whole of Scandinavia does a lot better on many issues than we do. I'm prepared to believe there are some things about their system. That are, that are good, but I have read enough on this case to know that there are deep flaws in this prosecution. The whole method of prosecution and judgment is a matter that is debated not only throughout Europe and in this case, but in many other cases and within Swedish society. But of course that's not on the, that we don't actually hear about that so much, but it's very controversial in Sweden what is happening in this case and what is happening to Julian Assange. Um, so I guess they're the arguments that I think, you know, constantly come our way and we have to dispel. So just putting it really simply, like all of you, I'm here because I believe in the transparency of information. I believe that a lot of things about the way our government relates to the United States, the wars we've gone to on behalf of the United States and on our own behalf uh, are disgraceful wars that have caused untold um, loss of life and damage to people. And we were lied to about those wars. And what, what WikiLeaks did was first of all launch a whole new way of doing journalism and getting information and secondly it actually provided more information from which we can counter those actions done on our behalf which we're so opposed to and of course i'm very concerned about what's happening to julian assange and it said to us you can't prove he's going to be extradited to the united states you can't prove he's going to be held incommunicado in sweden well of course sorry of course I can't um, prove it and nor can you, but, the, but you only need to look at the record of governments. Do you know during the NATO protests 35,000 people were arrested on one day throughout the United States and we didn't hear, hear about it. This is a government, the United States, that does things in secret, that hold, holds people for years on end without trial in appalling conditions. I don't care what they say, I would not like anyone to run the risk, particularly a person in the situation of Julian Assange, of ending up in their hands. So like you, I will continue to protest and I hope that Julian Assange is freed and that WikiLeaks most of all can get on with the job that it was set up to do. Yes.